Hello everybody, it's Mr. Q again. What's up? I hope you guys are staying safe and having fun. Today, we will continue our Travel Series Part 6. And this is the first part of the second episode of Part 6. And today we'll be focusing on the flight and what to expect during the flight. So take some notes, let's get into it. You've made it through the gate. You're walking down the gangway. That's the corridor that takes you to the airplane. So you show your boarding pass to the flight attendant as you get on the plane. And what do you do next? What should you expect during your flight? Obviously, the first thing you should do is find your seat. <laughs> Hopefully the flight attendant will tell you where on the flight your seat is. And when they look at your pa boarding pass, they'll say, oh, you're at the end of the plane or you're on the left side of the plane in the middle or something maybe. So listen to what they say. Find your seat. And once you find your seat, you have to decide, are you going to put your carry-on luggage under your seat? Or are you going to put it above you in the overhead compartment? So take out your comfort items, right? Take out your slippers, your neck pillow, your eye covers, right? Take out anything you need so that you can be comfortable. Your charging cable for your phone. If, the fo if your plane supports power at your seat, many planes do, many planes don't. <laughs> so if they have it, take advantage of it. That way when you get to the your destination airport, you'll have a full charge on your phone, right? So, take all that out, and then you can put your carry-on either underneath the seat in front of you, or under you, or in the overhead above you. And then, get comfortable. There are many ways to put your carry-on into the overhead. The first way you should try is long ways. Try to put it in like this. If that doesn't fit or if it won't stay properly, then you might have to put it in sideways like this. Don't put it in sideways unless you have to because that's going to take up more space in the overhead and it'll make other people trying to use that overhead have less space. So remember we talked about last time, be considerate of people. You know, try to help not only yourself but help other people around you right because you don't want to find your bag in some other overhead compartment somewhere and so neither does anybody else right okay where's the fire huh I'm sorry, sir. You're going to have to check that. I got it. No, I'm sorry. That bag won't fit. We'll no, no. I'm not. Hey, bag. I'm not checking my bag, okay? Okay. There's no need to raise your voice, sir. I'm not raising my voice. This would be raising my voice to you, okay? I don't want to check my bag, okay? And by the way, your airline, you suck at checking bags, okay? Because I already did that once and you lost it. And then I had everything screwed up very badly for me, okay? Uh, well, I can assure you that your bag will be placed safely below deck with the other luggage. Oh, yeah? How do you know my bag will be safe below with the other luggage? Huh? Are you physically going to take my bag and put it beneath the plane? Are you going to go right now outside with the guys with the earmuffs and go put it in there? No. No? Okay. Then shut your pie hole and listen to me when I say that I am finished with the checking of the bags conversation. Sir, we have a policy on this airline that if a bag is this large... Okay. You know what? Every flight will have a safety briefing. So, it doesn't matter how long the flight is, the flight attendants must give you the safety briefing. And 
This is important, especially if you've never seen it before. Most people have seen it many times, <laughs> so they tend not to pay attention to it very much. I still pay attention to some of it, just so I can verify where the exits are, in case there's an emergency. But, I mean, <laughs> there's several things in this safety briefing that they probably don't need to say again, like how to use your, safe, your seat belt. I mean, they've already forced you to put your seatbelt on before they've even started the safety briefing. So, if you don't know how to use it by now, or if you haven't figured it out by now, you sh <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it should have already been dealt with, and they shouldn't have to repeat it again. Except to say that there can be turbulence when flying, which means the plane kind of goes like this and shakes you. You might feel like you're on a roller coaster. And uh, so you want to have your seatbelt on to keep you from flying out of your seat. But other than that, I mean, you should already be familiar with how a seatbelt works and you should already have it attached to you somehow. So that's not really something that I feel is need to continue to repeat. But definitely knowing where the exits are is important and knowing where the life preserver is is important in case you guys have to land in the water, you know. Another thing that people don't think about very often is, you know, you're changing elevation. You're you, obviously you're going up into the sky, right? <laughs> you're going very high, especially on international flights. You have to go, you go super high because there's much less wind to drag the plane and make it use more fuel. So when you change elevation like that, your ears want to pop. And so it's good to have some gum or candy or something or kind of go like that or something to help your ears pop so that you don't have any issues while you're at that high elevation and when you return back to the ground. Let's get out of here. Too late. Hey, guess who's here? <laughs> what are we serving tonight? Chicken or chicken? <laughs> what a nice surprise. They said we were going to be short-handed this leg. You two take coach. Owen, oh, could you handle the announcements? Okie dokie. No problemo. Uh, they're going to know we're bogus. Relax. You get on the horn. I'll throw some peanuts at him. We'll be in Chicago before you know it. Okay, folks. The guy in front of you is Tommy. He'll be taking you through my little spiel here. Tommy is a Scorpio. He likes biking and he's never been laid. Exits. Okay, there's one back here. And there's uh, probably one over by the wing somewhere, usually. And what about seat belts? Too fastened. Take the little end and stick it in the big end. And you know what? If you guys don't know how to use a seat belt, just ring your call button and Tommy will come back there and hit you on the head with a tack hammer because you're a retard. Okay, and life preservers. These we may need. Although, what are the odds of us actually hitting a leg? My money says, if anything, it's going to be a mountain. To inflate, put it around your neck and yank down on the tab. No! Oh, He's a big dumb animal, isn't he, folks? Although, a big part of the flight attendant's duties do appear, appear, to be that they are serving you food and drinks, that is not the main reason for having them on the plane. So, although it seems like that's their job is to serve people, they're not just servers. They've been trained in many different aspects of flying, um, including first aid, uh, they have some I, idea on how to interact with the cockpit. They have other skills that may be necessary for if there is an emergency. So be respectful of these people. Yes, they're bringing you snacks and drinks and food and stuff, but that's not their main job. And even if it were, you know, you should still be treating people with respect. You know, these guys have a job to do and uh, you know, it's nice if they have friendly people to do that job with, you know. So, yes, <laughs> since I've talked about it, they do bring around food and snacks and drinks. 
and sometimes you can order nicer meals in advance so that you can be prepared for your meal and it could be slightly different than what other people get on the plane. On most international flights you will probably get some sort of meal, some and a snack. Usually international flights include that. Some inter domestic flights though don't have a food service at all while others have a food service but you have to pay for anything and everything that they provide which is why I suggested that you fill up your water bottle and have some dry snacks that way if you happen to be on one of those planes that doesn't have a food service or that doesn't provide something for free then you have stuff available to you that you don't have to pay for I promise you most of the time the the smell from the foods isn't going to make you hungry <laughs> if, if somebody near you has some of that food <laughs> I mean the food can taste fine but it's not like generally gourmet food unless you happen to be in first class in which case it's not gonna matter anyways <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry about it if they charge for it or don't have it available you're fine you got your water that you filled up and you have your snacks that you brought with you just remember to ask is it free yes great let me have this because oftentimes when it's free sometimes you can request the whole can I want a soda can I have the whole can of soda sure here you go no problem right and it's free so that's cool it's included just make sure that you understand how much something is regardless of whether it's free or not so also be aware that if you're sleeping they will not wake you up to ask you if you want anything because they don't want people to get mad at them for waking them up right so either you will miss the food service or you can specifically tell them please wake me up I want food service even if I'm asleep I want food service make sure you tell them this or else they won't give it to you they might have some extras afterwards if you wake up and are hungry and you can go back there and say hey do you guys have any more I was asleep and they probably have an extra meal or two that they might have available for you but be aware of that also be aware that especially international flights have some sort of in seat entertainment they might have like a little video display in front of you so you can watch movies play games or just check out the flight status to see where you are in your trip to see what your elevation is sometimes some planes even have cameras that you can watch and they can show you what's happening outside the plane so that's pretty cool some planes also have Wi-Fi it's not usually free <laughs> you have to pay for it and you'll probably need cash uh, credit card to pay for it. they don't take cash the, the, the flight attendants will take cash for anything you might want to buy especially if you want to buy alcohol right they will take cash probably but and credit cards but for Wi-Fi you'll probably need a credit card for that also feel free to take a look at the travel magazine that they almost all airplanes have in the pocket in front of you that way if you don't know much about your destination they might have some suggestions in there to of what you could do when you arrive all right guys let's recap what we talked about today as soon as you get to the plane the flight attendants will probably look at your boarding pass and uh, direct you to your seat so the first thing you should do of course is find your seat and then unpack your comfort items whether that be your slippers, your neck pillow, your eye covers, whatever. And then put your carry-on either underneath the seat or in the overhead above you. And then all that's left is to get comfortable. Hopefully you've already used the toilet in the airport because those are nicer and bigger and cleaner. And you won't have to don't you don't need to use that now. But get comfortable and put your seatbelt on. Then you're going to hear the safety briefing telling you where the exits are, <laughs> telling you how to use your seatbelt even though you should already have it on. <laughs> They'll tell you where the life preservers are. Guys, it's important. Pay attention to where the exits are just in case there's an emergency. And, you know, 
think about trying to pop your ears as you change elevation. And of course, they're going to come around with some sort of meal service. So they may have actual meals or just snacks and, and drinks. On an international flight, they'll probably, it might be included. On many domestic flights, they have some sort of small snack and drink included. But be careful, always know what is the cost of whatever it is you're asking for. Does it have a cost? Some do, some don't. So if you're asking for alcohol though, it'll almost always have a cost. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Know what the cost is. All right guys, so for today's homework, what I want you to do is this. I want you to draw a picture of you on the plane. It doesn't matter what part or what time frame of you being on the plane. Just when you imagine yourself on the plane, what do you imagine? Draw a picture and then write five sentences underneath it describing the picture. What do people see with or what are they supposed to see? <laughs> when they look at your picture because some of us aren't very good artists you know I'm not so draw a picture of you on the plane write down five sentences describing your picture and then share it with your classmate alright guys that's it for me today I'll see you next time keep staying safe and having fun bye bye